Many of you are aware of the shoe company vans. Many of you are probably not aware that I have uh, accumulated quite a few pairs of them. Uh, they are a cheap and stylish shoe that anyone can afford and can help complement any style of clothing. So let's dive into the history of the best shoes ever made. The, the creator of the Van Shoe Company, his name is Paul Van Doren, that's where the name comes from. Originally it was the Van Doren Shoe Company, shortened up to Van Shoe Company, then they added the S to create the shoe company called Vans. Yeah, Van, Paul Van Doren was born in 1930 in uh, Anaheim, California. Uh, he dropped out of school at age of, at the, in eighth grade, not at the age of eight, um, in eighth grade because he did not like school. Obviously that played out well for him as he's not making money. Um, he got a job in the shoe factory at age 14 because his mom did not like him sitting around the house. He was probably lazy bum, eating food, watching TV, I don't know, doing stuff you would do in California. <laughs> um, so he got a job at a shoe company, and that's what led into his uh, creative shoes. Uh, the Van Doren Rubber Company was, was opened March 16, 1966 in Anaheim, California. Um, that, is, that is his store. That is, it's not a rubber company, it's just the name for the shoe company. Um, he sold 12 shoes on the opening day. Uh, most of the shoes were custom made. They weren't shoes that he had sitting there. What you would do is you'd go into the store and say, I want a pair of shoes of this size, and he would make them for you that day. Um, and that was when he got the two for born, which is this type of shoe. The original price was $4.49, and like I said, the staple before was, was uh, they were custom made. Most people were complaining that they didn't have the color they wanted. So he said, just bring in a canvas, and then I'll make it into a shoe for you. And so that's how the, custom, the customizing the shoes came to be. Uh, the skateboarding culture with the shoes. Many of you probably are aware that uh, it is a very popular shoe among skaters, the, uh, the rugged design, the cool designs of them. And uh, one of the, mo the thing that skaters liked the most was, this, was the sticky sole of the shoe. I don't know, for some reason, the way he made the shoe, which is uh, it's called vulcanized rubber, it, it very, it's very good on rim tape for shoes. And then being in California, it was almost a must. That was the birthplace of uh, skateboarding. They called it sidewalk surfing for a little bit. And uh, skaters needed a shoe to, gri to grip the uh, skateboard well. And that was when he created the off the brand, the, the off the wall brand in 1976. He, uh, I don't know if any of you know this, he also tried to diversify from skateboarding shoes. He made baseball cleats, basketball cleats, oh, basketball shoes, not cleats. Soccer cleats, tennis shoes, skydiving shoes, and wrestling shoes. As uh, many of you know today, they're not around anymore because they never succeeded. Staples of the shoe, uh, like I said before, they're made of vulcanized rubber, a special technique used by many people, but also mainly used by this uh, company, this um, company of shoe. They were made in the USA for the longest time until China came around and stole, our, stole most of our jobs. Um, and then also, you can customize any type of shoe that you want. Uh, the types of shoe. The, uh, it's called the number 44 Deck Authentic. This is the first one that he ever made. Well, this pair, but this design is the first one he ever made with the, with the rubber down here, canvas up here, and then the five eyelets up top. Next type of shoe he made was called the Era. This was the one that was very popular among the skateboarders in the 1970s. Um, it had a, had a thicker heel up here and a little bit of thicker canvas. And then back here was a good was good protection from skateboards falling into your ankle. And then my next one, the next one is called the um, it's called the slip on. Oh, that's this. I think many of you have seen this before. Um, when it came out, it was uh, very very popular. It featured in the movies, and that's how it gained its popularity so quickly. Um, it's just a standard checkerboard pattern slip on shoe. Uh, the next one is the number 38 High Top Classic. That one was also very popular among the, among the skating culture because the high, high ankle guards so they don't get hit in the ankle when, uh, when they fall and the board goes, goes to flying. Uh, there's also special edition shoes, which is like this one. This one was designed by African women. Uh, the canvas was made. There's not another pair of shoes like that. Um, the canvas was made, cut into different designs, and then shipped off to wherever they produce the, uh, the fabric to be made. And then also the last one, last type of shoe they have are designer shoes. Like this one, this one is a Chima Ferguson edition. Each, uh, each designer has its own style of shoe along with patterns and prints that go on in the shoe. And a cool fact, or not, maybe a not so cool fact, is that every pair of Vans has the Jewish star on the bottom. So that way when you walk, you step on the Jewish star. If you want. 
past this row, you can actually see it up on. Um, there are so many different combinations and so many different types of shoes that you can get. The Van Doring Shoe Company is the definition of the American dream. They have come from a small store in Anaheim, California to a nationwide business. Good job.